Hey, it's Joel Dove here. Just perusing the Answers in Genesis website, and on the homepage, we have this article, Close But Not Close Enough, Fingerprints. The question is, are human and primate fingerprints so similar that those are evidence of common ancestry? Of course, Answers in Genesis' answer is no, but I'm not highlighting this article for uh, a episode of critiquing creationism for the sake of this particular question. This is a very simple, very short article. I'll read a little bit of it to you, but it contains a interesting misuse of a citation. And that's what caught my eye. So let's take a look at fingerprints, fingerprint analysis, and whether fingerprints represent common ancestry or common design, and look at how this young earth creationist uses the scientific literature to support their particular position, but does it? Let's take a look at that coming up next. Okay, so here we are. Here's the short article by Dr. Jennifer Hall Rivera. She is a curriculum expert. She has a PhD in curricular studies, uh, so an education degree. She also has a master's in forensics, and that is her special interest, having worked in the area of forensics for a while. And so she'd be a natural to write an article on fingerprints for answers in Genesis. So here's her article, and I would note that this is a repeat article from 2019, and that date is important because I'm going to show you a scientific article from 2020. Uh, and so these dates are important to think about uh, the history of thought on this particular question. But here it is being republished on a August 18th, 2024. So as she says, fingerprints are iconic of forensic science because, hey, every person can be identified by his or her unique finger or toe prints. Literally all 10 fingers and toes are different from each other and from every other person. I have a, I have a quantitative genetics lab in which we look at fingerprints uh, in the class. So I'm used to looking at a lot of fingerprints and seeing this variation, having students observe these uh, variations. Uh, the patterns of raised skin provide us with a textured, non-slip surface to hold things, climb, walk, and run, all activities that benefit from a friction surface. Hmm. Now this is... This is interesting because this is making a statement of the purpose of the ridges, the purpose for your, your fingerprints, that you're not, they're not smooth like a lot of other uh, mammals. Okay, and then we get to the big question, right? Because this is for, she's talking about human beings, but now the question is, are there other organisms that have fingerprints as well that might be using them for the same purpose? The same is true of apes. Yes, other apes also have fingerprints and they have the same type of patterns uh, on their fingers. And then comes this great quote, and this is the quote we're going to center on, uh, focus on here. Finger pads intuitively seem to be well designed mechanically to improve their grip. Right? That's the quote. Now, the important word in this quote, of course, is well designed because that's what Jennifer Hall Rivera wants you to focus on because she wants to say that fingerprint patterns being similar between apes and humans are not representative of common ancestry. We didn't, we didn't gain those via a common ancestor. We gained them from common design because only a designer could make fingerprints that have a function and a purpose such as they do, right? The, the, the common mantra for Answers in Genesis, right? You know, chance can't make you know, features or functions that have purpose. So if this has purpose for providing us with friction so we can hold on to things like hold on to my coffee cup here, then that must be from a designer. Uh, and she's using a quote, right, from the secular literature of somebody suggesting that fingerprints are well-designed mechanically to improve their grip. Now, let's see who that quote is from. Writes, biomechanical researchers Peter Warman and Roland Enos in the Journal of Experimental Biology from 2009. Consider this. Would primates benefit from friction skin on their hands and feet? Do they climb? Do they hold on to their food? Well, of course. So that must be the purpose of fingerprints. And since it's that, it has that particular function, this is a well-designed feature of an organism. And then just to round this off before I come back to that quote, because that's where we're going to spend a little time. We're going to look at the original quote, look at the context and see how she has used it, or <laughs> in this case, misused it. 
Evolutionists claim that this similarity or homology between humans and primates is evidence of common ancestry. But closer studies verifies, but I'm sorry, but closer study verifies fundamental differences that point to a common designer. Right? So there are fundamental differences, and because there are differences, it must be a designer. She doesn't explain that the, the rationale here that because there are differences, there has to be a designer. Um, and so what are those differences? Well, both primates and humans have ridged skin. Each print is unique. That's true in primates as well. A, a chimpanzee has different, different fingerprints on each finger and they're unique to them just like they are in humans. And then if we just, I'm just gonna scroll down really quick, right? The Bible explains the Lord has made everything for its purpose. So this is her biblical evidence that because there's a purpose for the fingerprint, then it must have been made for that purpose. So that's evidence that this particular design on the finger is a design made not through common ancestry, but in each one of those primates. Now, I'll just, a little sidelight here, I just want to point out that, uh, you know, gorillas and chimpanzees both have fingerprints, right? They have patterns of ridges on their fingers. And the gorilla fingerprints and the chimpanzee fingerprints are not the same. They're each unique to those two different species. So they have differences. But Answers in Genesis says that chimpanzees and gorillas are the same kind. They evolve from a common ancestor. So apparently differences in fingerprint types can evolve from a common ancestor, despite what her very simple article here is arguing, which is they have differences, therefore they must have been designed. That's that goes against the literature and the other uh, positions of answers in Genesis about other species. But I want to—I just want to show you what are the differences. Well, actually, these are differences between fingerprints, but these could be three different fingerprints on one of your hands. I actually have an arch, and I have a loop, and I have a whirl. Right? When I look at my ten fingers, I have a combination of those various things. So those are the patterns, and it turns out primates also share those same basic patterns. So then she's like, well, we got to find some differences, right? So here's a, a gorilla hand down here. And then she's just going to list off, well, there's more ridges in primates, but there's a higher density in humans. Our, our, our ridges are sometimes closer together on average. And so if you sort of take a lot of, do a lot of statistics, you'll find out that there's a range of variation of the ridge counts that is different between these different species. Okay, I'll grant you that's a difference, but I'll go back and say that chimpanzees, well, I would, I would, I, I don't have the data on this, but here's what I'd suggest to Jennifer Hall Rivera, Dr. Rivera does, which is look at the differences in ridge counts between bonobos, all right, and their sister species, chimpanzees. And I'll bet there's a difference, a statistically significant difference between the patterns of their fingerprints between those two species which Answers and Judges clearly believes are the same kind of organism and evolved from just two individuals that were on the ark. And therefore, those differences in ridge counts, all right, and density of ridges must have been able to have evolved from a common ancestor uh, within the last, well, for Answers in Genesis, the last 4,500 years. So what are these differences? Well, there are differences in world numbers. There's different, slight differences in primate knuckles. Total mean numbers of whorls, primates have 50 to 60 percent whorls, and um, and they're more are more frequent than loops with only 30 to 40 percent, depending on the species, right? So there's variation in these among primates. So yes, humans have a particular percentage on the whole, although any individual human might have the same number of whorls as a chimpanzee does, right? But statistically, on average, human beings are different than the average chimpanzee. Uh, tinted arches and primates. And there it is. That's the whole article. We're, we're done. We're at the end, right? It's just a list of, uh, I, these aren't really telling you, in fact, these aren't really telling me whether these are statistic, sorry, statistically significantly different at all. It's just like, here's a list of things there. There's differences among primates. Uh, and the, all of that is listed after saying, right? After saying, well, I mean, let's get up here. The Bible explains the Lord made everything for its purpose. 
That's true of ridged skin, not just of our fingers and toes, but across the entire surface of our hands and feet. Therefore, they were created that way. And that's evidence that it's not common ancestry. Um, okay, is that evidence of common ancestry? I don't think so. Sorry, my dog's barking. I gotta wait a minute. I'll be back. Okay, so ah, let's get back up to that reference. Fingerprint pads or finger pads intuitively seem to be well designed mechanically to improve their grip. You say, I think this is not this isn't a surprising statement. I think many of you, if you're asked, uh, why do we have fingerprints? Right? This would be the hypothesis that you would probably generate. Fingerprints help me hold on to things, right? Improve my grip. Right? That's that's that is something that many people have hypothesized. And so here she has found a statement from the secular literature that supports that particular statement, but is especially good because it says the word designed in it. And I think that's the reason why this particular uh, quote was, I'll say, cherry picked out of this particular article. And I don't know if uh, Dr. Rivera actually looked at this article or not, and you're going to you're going to understand why I'm saying that in just a moment. In fact, let's do it. Let's go look at that paper. OK, now. That article on Answers in Genesis website, there was a reference to a year and authors, but there was no reference at the bottom of the article, right? So it didn't, it didn't list the name of the article. So it had, I had to do a little hunting to come up with the actual article that she's referencing. And here it is from the Journal of Experimental Biology, uh, 2009. Do you notice something here? Do you notice something interesting? Check out the title. <laughs> Check out the title of this article. Fingerprints are unlikely to increase the friction of primate finger pads. All right, is, is that the impression you got from that quote? She started her article by suggesting the purpose of fingerprints was to increase friction or grip among primates, humans specifically. And here the article from which she took that quote, okay, the article title is Fingerprints Are Unlikely to Increase the Friction of Primate Finger Pads. You see, for dozens of years, since anyone's thought of the question of why do we have fingerprints, one of the primary hypotheses has been to improve friction, all right, to improve grip. But has that been tested? And lots of times uh, we, we tend to, we have a story a story that makes a lot of sense to us, right? We want to find a uh, an adaptive reason for all the features that we have. Why do I have uh, hair or light hair versus thicker hair uh, as other primates? Or a tougher one is, you know, why do some of us have middle digit hair and some of us don't have middle digit hair? Is there is there a reason for that? Is there a design in that particular feature? Hmm, let's not go down that rabbit trail. That's a story for another day. But the point is, is that somebody actually has to go out at some point and actually gather data to test the hypothesis that ridges on our fingers actually do aid in our gripping of things. Right? Uh, you know, you, you can believe that, but you don't really have any evidence for that. It, it, it is a, a, a very rational sounding hypothesis. It, it intuitively makes sense. In fact, her quote says... Right. Didn't her quote actually suggest that it's intuitively we think this way, that it's well designed. Let's find that quote in this paper. Uh, it's generally assumed that fingerprints improve the grip of primates, but the efficiency of their ridging will depend on the type of friction behavior their skin exhibits. Uh, goes on and talks about friction, on whether you have on hard substances or soft substances and the, and the differences in friction types. But this last sentence here, right, let's just read the final conclusion. Fingerprints reduce contact area by a factor of one third compared with flat skin. So if you have flat skin, you actually have more contact with the surface of the object you're holding. Uh, so you have one third less surface contact. However, which would have reduced the friction. This casts severe doubts on their supposed friction function, right? They don't necessarily, according to this article, it doesn't appear that they actually increase the amount of friction. Friction would allow, would aid in grip, right? The more friction, the more you're able to hold on to something. So this particular article 
Uh, it does some relatively simple studies of friction against one particular type of surface and finds that uh, having more ridges doesn't necessarily help you have better friction, right? Doesn't help you grip that particular surface any better than if you had flat surfaces. So this, so, so this hypothesis doesn't meet this first test of the hypothesis. Now, in Dr. Rivera's article published on Answers in Genesis, she's quoting from this paper. Now, surely, as I was reading this paper, uh, uh, Dr. Rivera's paper in Answers in Genesis, you got the impression that this quote and this reference was meant to support the hypothesis that she proposed, that is, there is a well-designed function for ridges, and that is to help us grip and, and hold on to things. And yet, the conclusion of this paper and the title of this paper suggests the exact opposite. So what's going on here? Hmm, well, let's go find that quote first. All right, that, it wasn't the first line. This is generally assumed the fingerprints improve grip of primates. Uh, it is generally accepted that the fingerprints of primates are adapted for grasping narrow branches. Hmm. So this idea goes back to 1936, an adaption that helps and find manipulation of objects, right? Holding on to things like, yeah, we're doing, we're flaking rocks and things like that. I need to hold on to the surface. Now, second paragraph. Finger pads intuitively seem to be well-designed mechanically to improve their grip. Now there's the quote, All right? Because there's the well-designed mechanically. That's the, care, that's the key phrase that Dr. Rivera or whoever quote mined this and provided the quotes that she then pulled from to create her article. That's the phrase that she wanted the, her readers to key in on. Then he describes this, the features and why that, that should be the case. Now, this is a typical scientific paper in the sense that you're testing a hypothesis. First, you're explaining this is the hypothesis, and this is a fairly well-accepted hypothesis, just not a well-tested hypothesis, okay? You know, this is sort of like intuitively, no one's really thought to test this hypothesis very much because it seems like, eh, duh, that's what, my, that's what fingerprints must be for. Um, and so they go ahead and test it. And as I said before, they find they can't find very strong evidence to support the hypothesis. Now it's on one type of surface under certain conditions. And so they're not saying this hypothesis is utterly wrong. They're saying like, as a, as a first, you know, stab at this, it's not really supportive of that hypothesis. All right. So I, I, I find this a curious use of quotes from an article like this, in which the article doesn't seem to support the, con the primary contention of Dr. Rivera in terms of fingerprints being designed. This wouldn't be the article I would reference in that case. Are there articles she could have referenced? All right, this is from 2009. Give me a second here. Let's take a look at another one. Ah, so what about this article right here? This is from 2020. So this would come after her publication. Okay, she, she published that first version of this article in 2019. And in 2020, I found this article. There's not been a whole lot of actual studies of fingerprint ridges and their adaptive purpose. Like, you know, try, actually testing the function of ridges. Do they aid in grip or not? Or is there some other reason why we might have ridges on our fingers? Uh, as opposed to a lot of other animals. Uh, and so here we have in the Proceedings of National Academy of Science, so a very um, prestigious journal, uh, a whole bunch of authors did a bunch of testing with really, these are uh, much finer scale instruments that are testing, um, you know, pressures and slip and all kinds of things on a variety of different surfaces. And they conclude that fingerprint ridges allow primates to regulate grip. So that does actually support the hypothesis that uh, Dr. Rivera had been uh, uh, suggesting, right? Fingerprints are unique to primates and koalas. Interesting connection, right? Um, one marsupial and a group of primates. Um, but the advantage, but what advantages do these features on our hands and feet provide us compared with the smooth pads of carnivores and felines, ursine species, and so forth, right? They're also walking on surfaces. They're also, they're not necessarily picking things up, um, but they're they are climbing, 
right? So you'd think that they would also need, you would think if uh, ridges were such an advantage in grip that other organisms also might have them, or we could say would have evolved the same characteristics. It's been argued that the epidermal ridges of finger pads decrease friction when in contact with smooth surfaces, promoting interlocking with rough surfaces, channel excess water, prevent blistering, and enhance tactile sensitivity. So interestingly, rather than saying they're increasing fitness, they're saying that some have suggested, I don't know why there's not a reference here to this because I, I should have looked this up, but I didn't, argued that epidermal ridges on finger pads decrease friction when in contact with smooth surfaces. Well, see, that's the thing. You have smooth surfaces, in which case you would want to have uh, more surface area touching that. Um, and ridges reduce the amount of surface area, as was shown by the, the other article. Right. So this is this is the this is the idea of trade offs. Right. You, you know, it's like, hey, if I have wrinkled fingers, right, which is essentially what having ridges are, but very, very tiny ridges, then you are uh, you have an advantage in one environment under one set of environmental uh, conditions, but you have a disadvantage and other environmental conditions. So no organism necessarily lives in uh, just one condition all the time, in which case they would naturally tend to gravitate toward evolving certain characteristics. They kind of have to have general features. But maybe there's something about primates that more often than not, they are grabbing on to maybe wet objects and wet things that they need to have better grip on. Um, yeah. I'm not, I don't, don't intend to read this article or go into this any further. I'll just say that Dr. Avera isn't necessarily wrong about the fact that fingerprints may have a function. All right. There might be an adaptive reason for having ridges or epidermis folded up into little tiny ridges versus being more smooth. All right. That's, that's quite believable. I would you know, just, I'll, I'll throw in the caveat. There isn't always an adaptive reason. Sometimes it's just the way it is. Oh, I kind of mentioned middle digit hair before, didn't I? <laughs> you know, so that was convenient. <laughs> it's like, some of you have middle digit hair. That's tiny little hairs on your middle digit sections. All right. And some of you don't have hairs there. All right. And that's a genetic difference. Um, and you're going to say, well, okay, so what's the advantage of having hair or disadvantage of having hair? Why is there is there selection for one or the other? Highly unlikely. It's just chance that there's a variant that creates a developmental difference in terms of if, whether the hair follicle develops or not or doesn't develop in that particular section of your digits. And there's probably no advantage or disadvantage to either one. In other words, there's nothing adaptive about it. Fingerprints could also be non-adaptive. It seems less likely. Seems seems like that they, that they are, have, might have more of a function than middle digit hair. But then that's that's it's all it's to say is there doesn't have to be a function to every single individual variant trait that we observe in any population. Uh, but there is a tendency for many people, especially sci scientists who study things, to try to find an adaptive purpose. You know, we want to try to find a function for it. And Rivera might be right. There might be a function for it. But I'll go back and say that. Her article is so simple. She's basically saying, oh, there's a function, therefore, I mean, her, her argument is basically, there's a function, therefore God, right? If you find a function, well, natural selection can't identify functions. And so uh, can't make functions, can't make new things, can't, couldn't make ridges. And therefore, uh, and couldn't make differences between ridges, I guess is what she's arguing. And so therefore, it has to be designed, has to be common design, has to be common designer made these ridges for different primates and humans. But I'm just going to, I got to say again, repair it, it, it bears repeating. Answers in Genesis believes that other great apes are all part of the same kind and all evolve from a common ancestor. And yet they have different types of fingerprints amongst them. Probably as much variation in fingerprints as you and I have variation from a chimpanzee. And therefore, they actually have reason to believe that the variation in fingerprints could have developed through natural selection and mutations over time into different frequencies and different organisms. All right, yeah, you know, let's leave it there. That is my um, my observation of the day, having read the front page of Answers in Genesis and just 
uh, was curious about that reference. I don't, I don't even know what triggered me to look it up other than there was so little substance in that article, incredibly little substance in that article about like, gee whiz, here's some fingerprints. I'm, I like fingerprints, so I'm going to write an article on fingerprints. Here's fingerprints. Our fingerprints are different. Therefore, it's a common designer. That is the substance of the argument. And so maybe I just, I wondered, well, I mean, honestly, misquoting is not exactly uncommon in the young earth creationist literature. So I probably was a little curious about whether that, that particular quote really fit the intent of the authors. But of course, all the authors were trying to say is, this is what is commonly believed. And now here, we're going to do this research to test that idea. All right. Hey, thanks for listening, hanging out, subscribe, like. I'm Joel Duff. Have a great day. Bye-bye.